Hey ladies, it's been a while. Sorry, this fly keeps flying around me and distracting me, but, um, anyhow, I'm gonna, I'm gonna preach this word because it's so in me. Let's pray. Father, I praise you for everything that you're about to do. I praise you for the dangerous women that will, will rise from this message. I call to every woman's spirit right now, Lord God. I pray that she will just rise and receive her calling. And Lord God, I pray that she'll step into a her that she never knew existed. God, I pray that you will just be with her in such a special and mighty way, oh God. Cause us as women of all shapes, all colors, all creeds to rise and become dangerous for the kingdom. In the name of Jesus, amen. Oh, hi guys. Um, usually, um, when, when I'm doing a sermon, it's, it's usually on Sunday, but this word was so burning into me, I decided to come on midweek and, and preach it. It's called Dangerous Woman. Dangerous Woman. It came about, I was all, like, those of you who know me know I love music, and my favorite show is called The Voice. I was watching um, The Voice um, yesterday. I was binge watching it because I had missed a few episodes. And one of the contestants for her song sang Dangerous Woman by Rihanna. And um, although that song is totally inappropriate, not kingdom worthy, those of you who know me know I like to take secular songs and flip them from the kingdom and for the kingdom. I've been doing that for years. That's how uh, when I started on YouTube, I started to do that. I would take songs and uh, take principles that people would use for the secular world and flip them on their head for the kingdom. If you watch some of my earlier videos on YouTube before they had the restrictions, you would you would see me do all that. I I have tons of them on YouTube if you go uh, to my YouTube channel. Um, okay, so I was watching her performance and I I was watching her sing uh, "Dangerous w Woman" by. Rihanna, and, um, I think it's by Rihanna, um, or is it Ariana Grande, either, either one of them, um, and that phrase, uh, dangerous woman, um, in the song it said something about you makes me feel like a dangerous woman. Something about you makes me want to do things that I should. Now, they're talking about it in a sexual way, which is not a way I'm talking about at all. For my purposes, as I began to think about Jesus' ministry and, and how um, and how he just just flip things upside down. He came into a world that was so structured, but so broken. They were so into rules and so into law because that's all they knew. Um, uh, because in the Old Testament, um, in Exodus, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy, 
you get you can get you get six six hundred and thirteen laws that they had to follow and they had to sacrifice animals like bulls and goats and calves and it was such such a structure thing because that's what they needed at that time but when jesus came he came um to fulfill the law he said in galatians the the law was a teacher but I came to fulfill it. So, because he came to fulfill the law, that those laws that they had to follow before were were no longer in effect. And um, and when I think of Jesus's ministry, he was very dangerous. He did. Um, he did things to really turn the kingdom upside down. And um, as I started to listen to this song, um, Dangerous Woman, when it says something about you makes me feel like a dangerous woman. When I think about Jesus, something about his ministry makes me feel like I want to just turn the whole world upside down for the kingdom. Like, I want to upset the norm. We've been uh, dealing with the norm and we want to get back to normal. We want to do this. But I've said before, um, I'm going to say, I don't know if I said this before, but I don't want to go back to normal. I want to go beyond normal. I want to totally turn the kingdom upside down. I want to really reach people. Like, I want to really upset the devil. I want, I want to, um, peeve the devil off so much that he's just it gives him a nervous breakdown. Like, I just totally don't care about uh, what has been done, what hasn't been done. Um, I just, I just, because I see so many broken people on a daily basis, and I see so many people that need Christ that need a savior and that makes me not want to have time to worry about whether you like me whether you think my hair is too long whether I should be doing this whether I should have a fly buzzing around me when I'm preaching I don't like I, I love all of you but I don't really have time for the naysayers. I don't really have time for those because people are dying and I want to emotionally, if not physically, and I want to turn the, the kingdom around, around. I want to be dangerous, not, not to people, but to the kingdoms of darkness that are running rampant, that are destroying families, that are that are wrecking people's lives, that are just causing people to go on drugs, prescription or not prescription. I just, I don't know. Like, I think we as women have been too docile, not only women, although this is called dangerous women. I think we as the people of God have been too docile as staying in our buildings and like just doing the cutesy church thing and hooping and hollering in church. But what, what I'm coming to now is what 
what is that hooping and hollering uh, getting people? Like, I know it's great to worship. I'm a worshiper big time. But our lifestyle has to go beyond worship. Worship is a lifestyle, but but at the same time, it it cannot be the only lifestyle you have. Like, I just want to turn the kingdom upside down. I want to introduce new ways of doing things, new ways of preaching, new ways of, you know, getting the kingdom out there because I think this world is dying and they need Jesus in a way um, that they never needed him before. But also, they need Jesus in a way that they can understand him and they can grasp him. Um, they can they can really uh, get into that. And I think that um, I love old school preaching. I really do. But I think for today's generation i think that that the when they look at the bible they see a whole bunch of old people and old scriptures and sometimes i don't think they really understand that and i love the bible i love the word of god i've loved it for about I think I was late starting to read the Bible. I think I was about 21. But um, I, I love it. And I think it's, it's the Word of God. And it will always be the Word of God. But I think we need to bring it, bring it to people in a way that they can understand it. And I... And no offense to traditional preaching, I love that. I watch it um, every Sunday. I love it. But I think for the world now, I think there needs to be innovation in the church. I think we need to become dangerous on the devil. And not only in the church, I think in whatever sphere sphere you're in, you need to become like a lioness as a woman in whatever sphere you're in. Like, what I mean is you just need to, to take, take no prisoners. If God has told you something, you need to be dogged and not, and not give up. Um, you need to be dogged, you need to have tenacity, you need to not quit. Because at the end of that, there are lives that need you, and you need to be dangerous for the kingdom. You need to be dangerous in the best way possible. Um, I think that, like, all this cutesy church stuff, I think it needs to stop because it's, I'm so convinced that people need the gospel in a way that they can chew it, that they can understand it, that they can vibe with it, that they can do it. And like, we as Christians need to be dangerous for the kingdom. We need to say, you know what? We're not accepting this. We're not accepting mediocrity. We're not accepting the fact that you're you're ramsacking our families. You're ramsacking our communities. You're ramsacking our lives. We need to say, you know what? We are going to be dangerous. We are going to be we are going to be, um, we are going to have tenacity. We are going to set our faces like plants and not let go. We are going to be like dogs with a bone. We won't let go. 
until we see change. And I think um, in order to see change, we need to not only not let go, but we need to be um, kind of um, outspoken in a loving way about what we believe. Many people may not agree with you, but at least say what you believe in a loving and respectful way. The church has been silent on too many things for too long. We've been afraid to confront too many things for too long. And when what you don't confront uh, gets bigger or expands. So if you see your son or your daughter going away and you say, oh, I'll leave them alone, it's just a phase, and you refuse to confront it, what you don't confront gets bigger. And the bigger it gets, the more it takes over their lives until they're so buried in it that, that you don't see the person anymore. And the, the Lord um, wants um, me, me to say, in the best way, become confrontational. Not defensive and not angry, not confrontational in that way, but confront things. Be dangerous by confronting things. Don't stay, don't stay silent about things that you know are not right, that are going on in your church, in your communities, in your families. Be dangerous for the kingdom. Be a threat to the devil. A lot of people are not a threat to the devil, and that's why he's running rampant in our homes, running rampant in our family. Uh, taking hold of our children and, and taking hold of our world. We need to stand up and confront the issues um, that are facing us. And I'm not talking about only uh, the moral issue or same-sex sexual issues or whatever the hot-button issues are that we think we need to confront. I'm talking about the issues that we don't talk about. I'm talking about the issues of the environment. I'm, I'm talking about the issues of global warming. I'm talking about um, certain issues that, of the education system and the um, disparity between black and white and the education system and systemic racism and all of those issues that we don't confront. We love to uh, disparage the so-called moral issues. Um, but those are not, yes, moral issues are important. But those are not the only issues we need to be talking about and confronting. And be dangerous about the the Lord cares about everything. The Lord cares about what's happening in our environment, what's happening around the world, what's happening with COVID, what's happening with whatever issues we are facing, what's happening with the wars around the world, how women are treated around the world, how women are degraded and mistreated and misused and not only in India or Africa but there's a disparity there's a disparity here when it comes to women and pay and, and women in certain jobs and women and respecting women and men knowing how to treat women and stuff so these are all the issues we need to get dangerous about because if we don't get dangerous about it, about it, these issues will run rampant 
and we won't recognize their world. And we'll say, oh, what we use as a scapegoat all the time is, oh, Jesus is coming to take us out of our world, out of this bad out in this bad world we have to sit back and just wait till he comes no he said in his world the earth is the lord's the world and they that dwell therein so if the earth is the lord everything on the earth every disparity every government um uh corruption it's his it's ours to deal with we need to care about stuff like that and we need to be dangerous we need to say you know what no this is not happening to our women no this is not happening to our children not on our watch and we need to set our faces like flint and say you know what no we are going to stand up and say no this is not going to happen because if we don't, that's what the world will, will run rampant. And if, like, um, like the reason why there are so many issues in this world and so many disparities, because when the rubber met, met, met the road, the church, the voice of God, the voice of reason, said nothing, said nothing. And the only reason why um, African Americans have the freedoms that they have today is because people stood up and said, no, this is not right. But these are not, but racism is not the only issue that we need to be talking about. We need to be dangerous for the kingdom, but we need to be also dangerous for the world. We need to be, when I say dangerous, I should qualify that. I mean spiritually dangerous for the world. We need to be at attacking the spirit behind things and not people. Uh, uh, quite a long time ago, uh, I did a sermon on YouTube, Attack the Spirit, Not the Person, or something. Um, and in that, I said, there is, behind every issue, there's a the spirit of, there is a spirit behind every issue. And what we do is we attack the issue, we, we attack um, the, uh, person, we don't attack the spirit, we attack the issue or the person and not the spirit. And what does the Bible say? We wrestle not against principalities, powers, rulers, we, res we wrestle not against principalities. Uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. And it goes, and it goes down the list, principalities, powers, and it goes down the list. So we are wrestling, we are fighting, but we are fighting each other. And it's ridiculous because we're not supposed to be fighting each other. We are supposed to be fighting the, the spirit of darkness. We are supposed to be praying. We are supposed to be fasting. We are supposed to be speaking up in, in the way of love. And we don't speak up in a forceful way, but we'll speak up in a way of love towards people. So we attack certain people not knowing that it's a spirit uh, behind it. We attack certain issues not knowing that it's the spirit behind it. Attack the, the spirit behind it and the issue will recede. The issue will vanish. Attack the spirit behind the issue and the issue will eventually vanish. And the, 
And the two ways you attack the spirit behind an issue is prayer and you speak up about it. We need to start praying about issues that people don't usually pray about. Um, we need to start praying about environmental issues. Uh, we need to start praying about the education system. We need to start praying about the plight of women. We need to start in other countries. We need to start, you know, seeking the Lord about solutions because the Lord has solutions. But the thing is, nobody's asking what those solutions are or very few people are asking, expecting an answer. When I go back to the Old Testament, um, when I go back to the Old Testament, and I see how meticulous God spoke to people, I'm like, wow, why aren't you doing that? And he said to me, well, people are not asking for specific answers. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So he says, ask specifically. He said, he said we don't need to pray about stuff. We need to start asking for specific answers. Because if he can be that specific in Leviticus and Numbers and Exodus and talk to those people, he never changes. And, and he'll be that specific now if we just ask. Anyway, I was supposed to be talking about dangerous women. Um, when I think of dangerous women, I think of women like Hannah. She wanted a child, but she was... Uh, and Penina had, had gotten a child, and um, she wouldn't stop until she got her child. And the story I learned from Hannah in 1 Samuel chapter 1 is just be persistent. Be persistent. Be persistent. Don't stop praying. Don't stop fasting. Don't stop working. Don't give up. Have tenacity. Hannah, Hannah prayed every day for a son. And not only did she pray, she did what was necessary to get what she needed to get. I think of Esther, and Esther didn't stop either. She went into the king and said, um, my people are about to die. I, you need to let them go. You need to set them free. My people are starving. They need help. And she was just so persistent in that those and and Ruth was persistent too. When I when when Naomi said you could go, um, Ruth said, "No, I'm not leaving you. I'm coming with you." And he he said, she said, "Where you go, I will go. Where you." Lodge, I will lodge. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. I'm not leaving you. And a lot, a lot of women just leave their post. And he's saying, No, you stay there until you get what you want. Until you get not what you want, but what you know what what you know God has promised you. Um, that's, that's what you are consistent about. Don't let go until you get what he promised you. Jacob wrestled with the angel all night. You may, and to be a dangerous woman, ladies, you have to wrestle all night, all day, for years, 
until you get what God has promised you. And there are some women watching me right now. Some women who have some dreams, you're getting some crazy uh, dreams about businesses, about ministry, about things like that. And he's saying, they're not crazy. It's from me. He's saying, the dreams you're getting, the reason you're waking up every night, the reason you are writing things down, the reason things are popping in your spirit, the reason you're preaching, the reason why you're so full, is because those things are from me. And don't stop wrestling. Don't stop believing. Because on the at the end of your dream, there are lives that that are waiting for you. There are lives that will be affected by your business. There are lives that will be affected by your ideas. There are lives that will be affected by your music. There are lives that will be affected by whatever God has called you to do. You can't quit. You can't quit. Don't stop now, but beloved daughter. You can't quit. You're almost there. You're almost there. You're almost where God is showing you. You can't quit now. You can't quit now. God has something in store for you more than you will have ever dreamed in your lifetime. And be dangerous about it. Be dogged about it. Have tenacity about it. Don't give up. Um, Dr. Brian Stiller was at my house um, a while ago. Hi. Hi, Brian, if you're watching this. Um, and, and I said, what's the most important part of ministry? He says, he said, just show up. When I asked him what's the most important part that I that I should know about ministry, he said, just show up. And that's what I've been doing every week, sometimes twice a week. Whether it's five people watching, whether it's a hundred people watching, whether it's one person who watched, it's not the number of people you get. It's the one life God can change because of what he put in you. You can't stop. You have to keep going. Keep showing up. Keep going. Keep going to that job. Keep serving. Keep ministering. Keep doing what you're doing because it's adding up. Although you don't see it, it's adding up. And he's working behind the scenes. Don't stop. Don't give up. Be dangerous for the kingdom. Turn Your job is to find the problem you're meant to solve and be wherever you are, turn the kingdom upside down. Wherever God has put you, turn the kingdom upside down. So, turn the kingdom upside down as a mom. Turn the kingdom upside down as a teacher. Turn the kingdom upside down as a preacher. You don't have to be a preacher to turn the kingdom upside down. You can turn the kingdom upside down Make the devil mad wherever you are. You have to... The church has has to come out of what they believe is church and open their mind to new ventures because God wants to do something new in the body of Christ beyond, uh, beyond our comprehension, beyond what we've ever seen before. But we need to be available to it. We need to come out of our churchy mindsets and ask God, Lord, what do you want to do with our giftings? How can I, as a trucker, 
turn the kingdom upside down? How can I, as a client of um, whatever, wherever I live, turn the kingdom upside down? And he will show you ways where you can turn his kingdom upside down wherever you are. He's called the church to be dangerous. He says, I've called the church to be dangerous. He says, I, he said, away with the cute. Away with the church as usual. Away with the back to normal where we just come to churches and sit our butts in a seat for two hours and we sit and we have a good time and then we go home. He said, away with that. I need the church to be dangerous, he said. He said, I need the church to rise and be dangerous. He said, I need the church to rise and be dangerous. I need the church to rise and be dangerous. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. He says, I need the church to rise up from their sleep and be dangerous. He said, the church has been sleeping for far too long. And he says, I need the church to rise and be dangerous. Yes, Lord. You know what all shit to us he said, rise, daughter, and be dangerous for the kingdom. Rise, son, and be dangerous for the kingdom. Yes, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We give you praise. Thank you for your word. I'm ready to be kingdom dangerous. How about you? I'm so excited. I don't know what the Lord's going to do, but he's going to do something. And I'm ready to be kingdom dangerous. How about you? It's time for us to take our place away with with being dull, docile and okay and in with being strong and knowing who we are and whose we are and how we know who we are is by getting to know the one who created us and if you don't know Jesus if you don't if you're not in a relationship with Jesus, and what I mean by a relationship with Jesus, I mean constant communication, constant communion with Jesus. If you don't know him as your Lord and the Lord of your life, getting to know him is easy. He said, you just have to do two things. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that he is Lord, you will be saved. And salvation is free. But although it's not easy, it's the best thing you will ever do in your life. And what I like to say is just, just say in your own words that you need him. And let it just come out of you. Just come out of you. And if you, after you, after you pray that prayer, if you need uh, more guidance, just message me and I'll be happy to uh, help you. So, bye, guys. I will see you later. Something about, something about you makes me feel like a dangerous And dangerous, dangerous women and dangerous men 
do things that are out of the ordinary. We do things that just break down doors and break down barriers and do things that we maybe shouldn't do when people tell us, no, that can't be done. Dangerous people push back past emotional barriers and sometimes physical barriers to do what they're called to do. And he's saying to do that today. To do what you're called to do, you have to push back past emotional barriers and, and physical barriers and psychological barriers. And he said sometimes, he said most times, the first, the barriers you have to push past are the barriers in you. You, because um, most times the things that are stopping us are the things we tell ourselves. And we have to push past those barriers. Those, I can't do that because I'm black, or I can't do that because I'm disabled, or I can't do that because nobody in my family has done that. You can, you will, and you must. You must push past the fear. You must push past the uncertainty. You must push past the barriers, because we need you in this world. We need you. We need you. We need you. Thank you, Lord. Something about, something about you makes me feel like a dangerous world. Thank you. I will see you guys later, probably Sunday. I'm ready to be kingdom dangerous. I can't wait to see what the Lord's going to do, but it's going to be something wonderful, and I can't wait to see it. Bye, you guys. Help something help you makes me feel like a dangerous world. I think I think it's Rihanna that sings that one. Correct me if I'm wrong in the chat, but I think it's Rihanna. 